Hello everyone, my wonderful partners, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, all my donors, my partners. I am so thankful that I finally have an opportunity to give you an update about what God's doing at the vault. And amidst the crazy season of busyness and the radical growth we've experienced, that I can take this time and reach out to you guys and say, hey. So it's finally good to get the opportunity to do this, to do this. And I just, yeah, first and foremost, wanna start off by saying thank you. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for um, pouring into me through prayer and financial donations and just reaching out to me and vice versa and having this dialogue. It's just it's so awesome. And it just brings me so much joy to be able to do the work I'm doing. And yeah, you know, God is so faithful. Isn't it awesome that we serve such an amazing, loving God who cares so much for us and cares so much for these youth who are hurting. And this world out here is hard. It's overwhelming. It's a scary place. But you know what isn't scary? God's grace and his love and the sending out of the Holy Spirit that allows us and reminds us that we are loved, that we are valued, and that we are image bearers of Christ Jesus. So as this is my first update, I'm realizing my work at the vault. You might not actually understand truly what I am doing and or what a drop-in looks like. So let's get this thing started off with giving you a quick little overview of what exactly a drop-in looks like. So first of all, the time that it starts at is from 3.30 to 6.30, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So once again, that's 3.30 to 6.30, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So my team and I often meet around 2.30 to tidy up, to tidy up, go over plans and prepare our hearts for time of serving youth. Because, you know, <clears throat> being parent, most of you being parents and raising, raising up youth, you understand that they are challenging, they need lots of love, they need extra patience, they need lots of grace, and ultimately deodorant. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, so if you're not in prayer, if you're not meeting beforehand and talking about and making sure your cup is filled first, you won't be able to pour into these kids. So typically an hour before we do that, roughly around 3.30, we open up the doors. Um, this is where the kids rush in. We kind of shuffle them into my office. This is where they hang up their jacket, they hang up their backpacks, they leave their bags in there, and then they sign in, check in, they write their name um, on our iPads, just some information about them. So we have contact for safety reason in case anything happens a little bit about themselves. And that way we keep record and keep track of how many kids we see in and out coming right after they sign in, they usually run to the snack table where we provide snacks, Starbucks sandwiches, um, different kinds of assortment of treats where they can come and just hang out and snack a little bit. So, during that time, from around 3.30 to 5, um, they it's open drop-in, so they can come, hang out, play video games, play pool, play foosball, play drums, do arts and crafts, play chess, all the above. They can really find a space to just be themselves and hang out. Normally on Tuesdays, we have programs, so we've done finger rockets, capture the flag, um, different art crafts, like glitter bears and pipe cleaner teddy bears and Easter egg hunts and, you know, all these cool activities. Thursday's more of a chill drop-in where it's just, we don't run any programming or any events like that, just typical drop-in. So at around five o'clock, we settle things down. We do announcements, prayer requests, and just a little update. And at this time we serve them the meal that my staff prepares. So on Tuesdays, it's up to us to prepare but thankfully on Thursday, Pastor Doug, the lead pastor of the church, actually prepares the meal for us and helps us serve. So once the meal is done, they get about another 30 to 45 minutes of drop-in time to hang out, socialize, kind of do whatever they want. But roughly around that 5.50, 6 o'clock mark, we kind of settle things down. We shut down all of our programming, our video games. And this is an opportunity where we get to have like a discussion. So often one of us, mainly me and my staff, 
will go up and share a word with them, a little devotion, something God's put the, on our hearts to impact them. So that typically goes for 15 to 20 minutes, so around 6.15, 6.20. We open time for question, dialogue, for mentorship for one-on-one -on -one if they have any questions. And yeah, just engage in dialogue and try and teach them some things and encourage them and give them a little glimmer of hope as we send them out. So around 6.30, that's when officially a drop-in closes. We usher all the kids up uh, out of the drop-in center. We shut the doors and yeah, we do a little debrief and just updates and stuff within my staff. So that's kind of the typical structure of drop-in and just thought I'd share that with you guys. So moving on, two cool stories I wanna share with you that really encouraged me and hopefully if you're feeling down and discouraged that they can encourage you too. So one of my youth kids, E, um, he's part of a group home. So I get lots of group home and foster care kid, uh, foster home kids that come. And this is what he said to me. He said, he is so thankful to have a place where he can feel safe, value, heard, appreciated, and encouraged. And that he doesn't know where he would be if it weren't for the work that we do at the vault. Isn't that something that by the grace of God, we as a team, you as my partners, we get to pour and make a difference into the lives of these youth. The second story I want to share with you takes place right after Easter. Before Easter Friday, so Good Friday, we had the opportunity to run drop-in on Thursday and I gave a talk on the real meaning behind Easter, just the importance of the death and resurrection of Jesus and why we celebrate Easter and why it's more than Easter egg hunts and chocolates. So after this talk, three kids came up to me and asked more about who this Jesus character was and why he did that for them. So if you know most of these kids, this is huge because often they either mock or very cynical and make fun of religion. So it's just cool to see that taking time to be intentional really makes a difference in their life and that the Holy Spirit is working. So now that we got the overview and kind of two cool stories, I want to share with you some statistics. So right now we are seeing roughly Tuesdays and Thursdays about anywhere we have 103 active students. So that means that my drop-in center alone, between the two days we roughly see, could, could see a potential of 103 active students that come. Right now we're ranging from 50 to 60 students, which is uh, manageable, kind of. Um, one thing we always need is volunteers and more staff. So yeah, and just, just yeah, this last Tuesday we had 50, 50 students, we served meals, Last month we had 79 students and we are seeing new students every single week, which is encouraging to see growth. So as we conclude this video por portion, portion of this newsletter, I just have a few prayer requests. Um, first and foremost would be that you continue to pray for safety in the drop-in center for these kids to experience God's love um, to experience who Jesus is and that they can encounter God, not only in our drop-in center, but in their life. Um, for me, would just be to find rest in God and continue to trust in Him and how He leads me in this role of mine and for my staff that they'd be able to be able to pour into these kids. And uh, yeah, those are just a few prayer requests. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys and to get a reply back. And if you wanna know any more information or anything that's going on, I would love to meet for coffee and share with you in person, face to face. So thank you for taking the time to listen and for being a part of this ministry. God bless you.